so let's start the webinar so basically this webinar is like a, a featuring Midas GTS and its features towards the application towards its applications in Midas sorry in uh, mining applications so basically all the mining uh, problems which are faced by the clients can be dealt in brief in uh, today's webinar and then how that can be solved using this Midas GTS NX will be uh, represented today so basically this Midas GTS NX is like an uh, um, finite element software and GTS NX stands for geotechnical tunnel solutions new experience so basically all types of your geotechnical and tunnel engineering problems can be easily dealt using this software so when we come towards mining it's like completely geotechnical and geological related and even we go for tunneling as well it's like a whole um, uh, like complete uh, un underground uh, it's like complete soil and complete geological and complete tunneling which we need to go for so basically I will be mentioning the type of problems which we basically go through the, um, the different types of mining applications and then I will say how this software can able to rectify those particular cases so let's go further So basically, uh, whenever we, we go for mining, uh, we basically go for an open pit mine or an underground excavations. So there are uh, some other types of excavations. So basically, in today's, we will be dealing with the open pit mine and then we will go for underground excavations. So whenever we go for open pit mining, because of uh, uh, like um, uh, we can find the problems called slope stability and a slope failure. Here in this particular uh, slide, you, you can see that there is an entire uh, uh, failure of the slope in an open pit mine it may be the mine may be because of uh, uh, the mining was done on in a, a soil mine or else it can be a rock mine or else it can be granite or else uh, means the material can changes but uh, the failure here is a predominant one which needs to be taken care uh, before going for the type of area or excavation or else uh, how uh, the, uh, the slope the slope angle of your pit mine and then the uh, the volume of excavation at the same uh, in a, in a same step so we need to go across all these uh, particular cases whenever we go for uh, an uh, excavation execution of your uh, mining so this is a particular po problem which we fa face in uh, uh, the real uh, in real and practical situations now we will be dealing with how to easily come over this particular case in using Midas GTS NX and uh, suppose when we go for underground ex underground deep mining excavations let's say uh, we can in like let's uh, go for uh, this underground deep excavation we can find these pillars where uh, we basically provide this field filler uh, these pillars to fire to for an uh, like stability purpose let's say the whatever overburden we should be transferred through the pillars to the underground so that's why we use it to provide these columns or else coal pillars and then this is a problem which we face because the damage can be predominant sometimes we, when we you know when we are not going for like fine and uh, uh, the ball uh, means the diameter of the uh, pillar is not correct and also let's say when we go for uh, uh, like a, a deep excavation we the major problems which we face is the seepage so let's say in this particular case there is like water in rush so what we need to do is we either need to provide a dry niche or else we need to stabilize the entire thing but uh, stabilizing the entire thing uh, like it may takes like a huge economy it's like a uh, overburden for an uh, contractor or for an uh, executioner so what we do is we analyze it by considering the seepage and what is the deformations which you get and what is the stability uh, like um, the stabilizations that needs to be done will be uh, like covered today and even soil and water losses so once your soil and water losses we what happen when it when this happens we can find uh, like a subsidence so the subsidence like this so basically these are the different problems which we face in like a deep excavations and we face a slope failure in an open pit mines so basically all these problems are related to stability of your structure so it may be a deformation uh, failure it may that related to slope failure basically it may be a stress concentrated or localized stress failure 
So all these type of values can be easily studied using finite element softwares and GTS NX is a way better software in order to directly study these particular cases in a very single model and then will help you in directly getting out the results. So let's go for the introduction of your, um, it's the basic agent of your particular uh, GTS NX software. So this is a basic agenda today. I'll be introducing the Midas, so what Midas as a company is and then I will be introducing Midas GTS NX and later on I will be demonstrating the open pit mining. Basically, as I said earlier, we can find uh, the stability like the stability problems in your open pit mine. So in order to study those stability problems, we need to go for stress analysis. And in order to find your slope failure, so basically there we are finding a slope, it's as a landslide failure because the it, the volume of uh, soil is like getting failed and you can find in uh, uh, like your pit or your open pit is no longer in use. So you go for slope stability along with your excavation and then we will export the volume. So what basically this is, I will be explaining you further. And then we, and then the next thing is your deep excavation. So in the deep excavation, what we basically come across is, we come across your shaft, how to model your shaft, and then how to model your roadway and your support system. So the roadway can be related to your tunnels. So how to model your tunnels uh, towards your excavation. So where we suppose there is a, like a deep mine, and uh, I'm going for the modeling of a shaft and then I will be modeling my tunnel and then I will be directly ex uh, uh, all means start uh, my drilling process so all the mark all the mine min, mining material which I get uh, that will be transferred back to the tunnel and to back to the shaft so basically this is nothing but your ex execution process but the modeling will be remaining the same that will be de uh, dealt in this particular example and then I will be I uh, mean, as I said, uh, in the deep excavations, we find uh, the stability failure, stability uh, problems such as your local st uh, stress concentrations and even subsidence as well. So because of all these cases, how uh, this finite element software may help you in order to come, uh, come overcome these problems can be dealt in, in this webinar. Uh, even the volume data expert. Basically, you are you are going for an uh, construction stage analysis. So, you using this construction stage analysis in each and every stage, how much amount of volume is being excavated? So, you need to know that volume so that that volume can be directly shared with your uh, pra uh, practical engineer, and that practical engineer while getting. Uh, means excavating each and every uh, stage, then he can come to know this much of volume is being done. So I need to go for this stabilization now. So that part of interpretation and then it needs to be done using this volume data export report. And then we will be going for result interpretation. So this is Midas basically. So Midas is a South Korean company. We are like number one market share in the entire civil engineering software solution in the world. So we are like having number one market share in the entire civil engineering solutions. We we like we are across 120 countries and more than 20,000 number of clients are there. 80,000 number of uh, license has been sold till now. So we basically hail from South Korea. So from South Korea, and then we are having branch offices in India, Russia, China, Japan, UK, UAE, etc. And we are having partners all over the world. So this is our global network. So basically we started as an engineering consulting service. So based on the experience which we gained from the consulting service, we managed to find our own computer aided engineering platform that's technological and de development. And this because of these two in the same company, we got a synergy to provide an optimal solution for practical engineering. So this, this is a basic idea about Midas, uh, um, Midas on a whole, basically. So these are our different product lines. Suppose when you go for building and structural engineering, we got, we got your mind, we got Midas Gen, we got Midas T Shop and Design Plus. When we go for bridge and in civil engineering, we got Midas Civil and Midas FEA. And when we go for geotechnical and tunnel engineering, so even mining comes in this in this particular case, we got Midas GTS NX and Soilworks. So this is like complete 3D software 
uh, where all your 3D stability problems and all the other related problems can be checked. And we got your SoilWorks as well. SoilWorks is like complete 2D platform where we run all the analytical finite element as well as your limit equilibrium methods can be dealt in SoilWorks. And we got Midas uh, NFX and FX Plus for mechanical engineering. So this is our basic product line. So now what I do is, uh, as I already said, we are done with your introduction with Midas company as a company. And then now I'll be describing in brief what Midas GTSNX is. So this is basically Midas GTSNX. So whenever you come across the uh, geotechnical problems or mining problems, all these can be classified under three, mod uh, three uh, categories based on the type of modeling. We got axis symmetric modeling, we got 2D modeling, we got a 3D modeling. And uh, basically, so these three can be covered under same software that is Midas GTS NX. So one of our uh, engineer is asking, so how much experience do we have in mine, mining engineering? So mining engineering, this software has been widely used in Russia, China, and Korea as well, uh, even in the mining, uh, in large mining. So it can be like a coal mining, it can be a normal uh, open pit mining. So this is like a complete finite element package where we basically uh, check the stability of your structures and then uh, whether it is safe to go for execution or not. So that's why we are uh, focusing on this particular case in this webinar. So we got a good experience and I will be sharing our project applications as well. Yeah, so this is how the interface looks like. So this is the basic uh, interface of our Midas software. So we got a geometry in the top, we got a mesh, and we got static slope, and we go further. So basically, we start with the geometry. So whatever the, uh, the means geological investigation and geotechnical investigation, whatever the report you get, you basically take that report and provide it as a geometry input in the software. So what we got some basic workflow in the software. It means based on the reports you get, you will be directly taking for an um, geometrical modeling. And once the geometric modeling is done, we, we go for next step where we go for material definition. So after material definition, we go for uh, uh, meshing. So once meshing is done, we go for loading. So different types of loadings in different conditions. So we go for, and can go for blast loading in case of deep mining as well. So we go for mining, uh, sorry, loadings, and then it will be followed by type of analysis. Suppose it's a slope stability, so we go for slope stability analysis. Suppose it's in water in rush, so we can go for coupled analysis where the stability can be studied by taking consideration of your pore water pressure as well. So the type of analysis by a key role and then once the analysis is completed we interpret the results so that's the basic workflow so this Midas uh, uh, GUI is also made in such a workflow we start with the geometry we go for mesh we go for type of uh, loading in particular analysis and then we go for results so that's the basic idea so one more engineer is asking that, have you ever consulted for a mining engineering company in the past? So basically, uh, we, uh, we uh, so this is Harsha, I'm from Midas India. So we don't do consultancy in here, but we support our different engineers. So once our engineer, so such as you, by our software, we will help throughout your project, like giving a support on how to model the things, is the modeling correct, and how to interpret the results. We will be helping you throughout your modeling and throughout your project as well. So that's uh, we, we are uh, but Midas Korea, so which is our headquarters, are, are, are into the consulting services. So this is basically about the Midas uh, software like a GUI, graphical user interface of your Midas GTSNX. So, yeah, coming to our next question. So next uh, um, slide, that's our geometric modeling. So as I said, we got some particular workflow. What we do is we start with the geometric modeling. So that's the geometric modeling. So we in here, we can model n number of uh, like uh, models at the same time as well. So what I mean basically is here, this is your model. 
it can be a 3D model or a 2D model. As I said, this software supports both 2D, 3D, and axisymmetric problems. So once you go for 2D, that can be extruded to form a 3D. And then in this particular case, you can go for either tunneling or your uh, like a, a slope stability analysis based on your uh, the, uh, the problem statement. So this is your uh, geometric modeling. So basically all the commands are like similar to your AutoCAD. So all the AutoCAD commands has been incorporated in GTS and X and this will be very much helpful in case of your modeling. And uh, here, this is your tunnel. Let's say this is a kind of your roadway towards your mining, uh, your mining site. So what we do is we will have a profile of your section and then this section using the guide curve, we will be having this particular shape within, within no time, within like a, a five to 10 seconds, you can have this particular model generated. That's the beauty of the software. So we got your trim and divide options. We got your divided. So this will be very much helpful. I will be explaining you this in the demonstration as well. And so let's say we got your tunnels, we got your excavations and we got our stopes as well stopes. So once your excavation is done, we got we will be having a stop. So using some surface, we develop a DXF files, nothing but your AutoCAD files of those particular stops. So that stop will be very much helpful in order to find the stability means in order to run a stability analysis or a stress analysis in GTS NX. So that particular file we can directly import into GTS NX and we need to go for geometric modeling. So once you are going for a geometric modeling, what we need to do is we are having number of uh, solids in a particular file. So you need to have connection between one solid to other solid. So we got auto connect feature for that. So that's the basic idea in here. And we got your uh, imprint so that you can directly provide your anchors. We can directly provide your piles for stabilization, all the other cases. And this is your basic, uh, very much a help, a very helpful tool for you. So this is your, uh, let's say, uh, we are having this complex terrain. This is a Google map, let's say. So from the Google map, we can directly get to have this particular contour map. So using this contour map, we can develop a surface. So using this surface, we can develop a model. So why are we developing a model using a Google map? So that's a basic question. So what I can, I can say is modeling of this particular feature, uh, modeling of this particular numerical uh, model will be very much difficult without this particular uh, contour map. So in order to interpret your contour map, we got a tool called Terrain Geometry Maker. So this is your Terrain Geometry Maker. So why are we again going for Terrain Geometry Maker? That might be a question. So let's say I'm having a, this particular uh, terrain and uh, under, uh, in this uh, terrain, I'm going for an excavation. Let's say it's a uh, surface excavation or a deep excavation. It might be a tunneling or it might be a mine. So it might be a roadway for my tunnel. So there may be many reasons in order to excavate the cases. So what we do is in order to model this complex thing, we got a terrain and uh, this terrain will be converted to your Google, sorry, contour map. Using this contour map, we develop a surface and using the surface, we develop a model as simple as such. Uh, so uh, basic idea in here is making your geometric model within no time is a basic idea. So why again, we are going for terrain geometry maker. That might be other question for a mining engineers. So let's say we got your open pit. So what we do is we will directly go to your site in and Google Earth. So in that Google Earth, what we do is we will directly focus your area and develop a DXF file of it with respect to your depth. And that will be converted to your contour map. And then that contour map will be taken as a surface. And that surface will be developed here. And you can run your slope stability analysis or your normal uh, let's say stress analysis so in order to find a deformation so i will be giving you a demonstration within five minutes for the entire things which i'm saying now so before going into it we got some other cases as i said once you're completed with the geometric modeling we need to assign some material to it so let's say in the uh, in case of deep excavations i'm finding coal so you will be having a coal testing and that from the testing, you'll be having certain parameters like your cohesion value, your unit weight, all those things. So those values will be an input in this particular software. Using those inputs, we study the stability of your structure. 
so for that we are having elastic materials and plastic materials so all types of your geological and geotechnical uh, types of materials are present in here we can use different types for different types. Suppose, let's say we got a rock over there. In that case, we can go for hook brown or a more, a generalized hook brown. So, but that uh, that rock is having certain discontinuities such as your joints or your tension cracks, all those cases. So, what we do is we go for jointed rock mass model. So, we got different models for different purposes. So, we go generally using these different materials in MIDAS CTSNX, which can solve a problem. And uh, suppose you are done with your uh, material definitions, what we do is we go for 1D, 2D and 3D different types of elements. So let's say I am having anchors, I am having a steel ribs for my roadway. Those steel ribs can be, can be modeled using 1D elements and if you are having uh, like a steel lining or a concrete lining to your complete shaft, for that we go for a gauging or we go for a shell element suppose we are having a rock so we go for solid element so these all different elements will be very much helpful and it will be very much easy to model it in the software so one of our engineer is asking uh, do you have 24 hour technical support for the software yes sir we do support uh, within 24 hours all the queries we are having a global platform called global support.midasuser.com whenever there is a query that being pro, uh, means a drop down into our global support we directly go through it we will be directly um, like answering the question within 24 hours so that's the policy which we have that will be very much helpful for the uh, clients as well when you're like dealing with the real time problems. So, so when coming back to our presentation, so what this, uh, so we are done, uh, we are done till the geometric modeling and material definition. So once this material definition is done, we go for meshing. So this meshing is very cool. Uh, within no time, you can have these different types of mesh. So this mesh will be very much helpful in order to calculate the stresses at each and every point of your entire model. So we mesh it we mesh using different elements we got hexahedral element as well which will be having very accurate results and uh, uh, less time for analysis so now coming to the different types of loadings which we can apply on the model so we can go for a normal cell fight forces uh, moments displacement suppose uh, you, you you know that this particular fire this particular stove will be subsidized by let's say 20 mm so let's say so we can directly apply 20 mm on the particular uh, stove and we can find the corresponding stresses so that's the displacement for you and we otherwise we can directly provide a pressure so we can provide a water pressure as well we can apply temperature loads pressure pre stress so in a deep excavation this will be having major uh, means impact on your excavation the temperature stresses even this can be applied in the software and then we in the dynamic loads we can go for ground acceleration seismic load basically time varying static time varying nodal it might be a sinusoidal load it might be a blasting load it might be a machine load so all these loads can be applied in in the software so one such a kind in here is this is a blasting load Basically, what happens is uh, whenever you are going for a deep excavations or a, mi or a open pit mining, so we generally blast over there I mean, and using that blast all the materials which will be collected to in the down, we will collect it and then we will go for uh, the transportation. So that's the basic general idea. So what in the software we do in here is we will apply a blast load at the point where you are inserting your charge and then what we do is we will run a time history analysis such that because of that blast load what is the effect on your entire open pit or your entire deep excavation means entire model basically what is the stresses that is being uh, coming so that stresses and then uh, you can go for deformations how the your entire model is getting deformed so even that blast loading can be generated using different equations provided by different scientists all around the world you, you got your national highway with respect to us and international society for explosives explosive engineers all these are present directly in the software we can directly use these different values and provide this graph and this graph can be applied to any of your point of your interest. Suppose I'm having an open pit mine and I will be applying the load at in here. 
so because of this blast load blasting happening in this particular area what is the deformation in the entire model so what is the deformation and what is the stresses in the entire model everything can be studied using this particular case this will be very much helpful and coming to our major cases the finite element analysis suppose let's say uh, we are running only a stress analysis in order to find a deformation or your stress concentration in your stopes or in your open pit mines let's say if for that we can go for nonlinear static analysis or a linear static analysis which provides you with your complete deformations and all on the respective stress results as well and then we got a slope stability analysis so in the slope stability analysis what we do basically is we run a strength reduction method so what we basically strength reduction method is so that's on other side what we basically do in here is this strength reduction method can be applicable to entire 3d as well as 2d slopes so whenever you're having an a landslide failure in your open pit mines we model the open pit mine as such and then using that open pit mine we will run that particular strength reduction method and you will be obtained with the factor of safety as well as, well as the deformation stresses everything so once you are uh, getting that particular cases what we basically do is we will stabilize the slope and we will rerun the analysis suppose it is providing a good results or not so we can study the step before stabilize it and non stabilize it slopes as well and for blasting loads we can go for dynamic analysis and in order to find as uh, like water in rush uh, let's say we we got an uh, seepage in your entire deep excavation case so we uh, that need that seepage which you are finding needs to be uh, driven away or needs to be drained away using different techniques but we basically need to know how much water is being getting into the uh, mine or into or into your roadway or such so in order to find that water getting into your tunnel or into getting into your roadway we need to run a seepage analysis so in order to run these three cases so in dynamic analysis or stress analysis or seepage analysis uh, parallelly then we can go for coupled analysis so because of the variation of your water pressure because of variation of your pore water pressure because of your seepage in rush what is the effect on your loading that is being applied and what is the effect the deformations everything and stresses everything can be studied using this coupled analysis this will be like your real time analysis and even you can go for consolidation analysis suppose you get you got you are a nuclear waste and that nuclear waste is dumped very uh, deep into your uh, ground and so that should be covered with an impermeable membrane such as your uh, clay soils so in order to study that case that cases we need to go for consolidation analysis so all these cases can be replicated in your construction stage analysis so your stage excavations means that there is your roadway or there is your tunnel which is being excavated in different stages so that will be studied in your construction stage analysis at each stage what is the deformation what is the stresses which you are facing can be get get before, uh, can be obtained using this construction stage analysis and some easy control options let's say so this is your water uh, table uh, before because of excavation what is the load that is being applied because of the water table will be directly calculated by the software and will be applied onto your model so that's the basic idea which will be uh, reducing the human effort for calculating the entire load because of the excavated area and all those stuff so the software directly calculates the water load and it will be applied directly on the software and so once you are done with the entire analysis so what type of results now you can get you can get this flow paths and flow quantities as well so here you can see when you run your seepage analysis all the seepage that is being getting into your slope or into your um, a mine or into your stop or into your roadway everything can be studied and the proper measurements the proper stabilization techniques can be taken further and you can get the graphical outputs you can get the tabular outputs you can get the contours as being shown in this uh, presentation here you can see we got a tunnel i can cut at the particular section and i can see the results how it is being varied and even you can find a cutting plane diagram as well as how i am showing 
and you can even find the pressure bulbs which is a basic idea behind us means how much of pressure that is being distributed throughout the entire model suppose let's say i'm interested in finding the area which is having a stress of 500 kilonewton per meter square because of the excavations that is being done so i will directly input 500 the software shows the area where we are finding a 500 kilonewton per meter square of stress so that's one case and another case is your 3d pdf report so whatever model which you prepared will be directly transferred your, to your 3d pdf where you can directly handle your model as how you handle it in the software and you can see the results and you can go for stresses deformations and all the other cases as such and some project applications so let's say so uh, setback is like an, uh, a very famous tool in order to get a mining uh, plan so let's say we got a stop in order to find the mining plan of the particular case setback is a very good tool so it, whatever the uh, like files which you get from setback can be directly inputted into your gts nx and from gts nx we can generate your geometric model and from geometric model we can get to your finite element model so why are we doing this finite element model and once again so in order to get to your stability analysis so the deformation stresses the slope stability failure and the uh, uh, stress concentrations at the intersections of your tunnels so all those cases can be easily studied using this particular uh, softwares and let's say we got a deep mining analysis and we got a roadway for the deep mine so let's say this is my roadway and uh, because of the excavation that is being done with respect to the layers I'm having you can see all the layers are like vertical and all the layers is like having the different properties in different directions you can say these are all other tropic materials or maybe having a fault or fold at the particular cases so what we do is we model how it is and we will go for uh, your and uh, means excavations or how you proceed and then we will find the results here we can find your deformations we can find that reason like your stresses all those things and suppose let's say a uh, coal roadway what happens basically in a very deep mining when you're having like huge volume in order to go for excavations what we do is we, we go for number of roadways number of tunnels so here this is your one tunnel and i'm getting getting another tunnel as well what is the effect of excavation of this tunnel onto your existing tunnel so that can be studied in here this is your one tunnel and another tunnel and another tunnel so basically all the stresses and deformations and your strains will be directly studied using this software and the support system as well so I, as i was talking here you can find your tunnel and because of your tunnel uh, you can find your support systems which will be generated using the software and the results correspondingly can be seen your deformations your vertical stresses as such so this is your open pit mine let's say i'm going for an uh, slope stability analysis so once i model the your open pit because of you because of the stresses that are being localized or localized stresses or deformations whatever uh, cases which you get in a real can be modeled in here and because of the analysis you perform suppose let's say i'm performing a stress analysis i can find the stresses and deformations in the entire model and let's say i'm going for slope stability so the software will calculate the entire area which is ready to fail and it will be giving you the factor of safety and once it gets fails how much distance it can go it may how much distance such as the deformations and your stresses everything will be given i'll be showing you an uh, example as well so let's say this is my topographic map and from this topographic map i can model the finite element model so using this finite element model and i can find that and i can run the analysis and i can find the deformation contour like such so here maximum in here and it is being decreasing in here so that's the basic idea i'll be showing you a live example as well 
and let's say uh, whenever you are into uh, the type of support systems let's say uh, we, we basically all the mining or for temporary or for some or like permanent purpose that all depends on the amount of area which is being excavated so what we basically do is we never go for permanent supports we go for temporary supports like how I'm showing here these are my steel ribs so I can even model these steel ribs in the software and according to your uh, means according to the distance which that is mentioned by my particular design engineer so I will directly model this particular steel ribs I will run the analysis and I can see whether that ground part is being deformed or not or else if it is being deformed it is a subsidence or it is like swelling so depending on the conditions it may even swell in some cases so all these conditions can be studied using our GTS NX software so once you study you can find the plastic zones so where there is like huge plastic uh, huge yielding elements so how how much of your entire soil is getting into yield or how much of your rock is getting into yield can be seen using this particular results so that's what i'm showing this is the damaged part where there is like getting into plastic zone and these are some other examples let's say this is my uh, pit uh, open pit mine and i'm going for excavation in stages it might be a 2d model or a 3d model or a part of your complete model as well so if we with respect to one excavation what is the slope stability uh, what is the factor safety and with respect to second excavation what is the failure surface and what is the factor safety and with respect to third excavation and so on means with respect to third excavation what can be my failure surface and what is the factor of safety and with respect to last so what i'm basically telling in here is uh, in a one model you can run these number of analysis at once in a first stage you will be getting the factor of safety second third fourth and fifth and each stages you can find and um, your failure surface that is the most advantageous things which we have in gts and next so you can you can model this type of tunnels shafts uh, i'm having a model with respect to shaft and the tunnel intersections as well so that will be shown to you in uh, within some time so here you can see uh, even a shield tbm suppose in mining some cases we go for a shield tbm as well tunnel boring machine so that roadway will be developed because of the shield tbm or with respect to drilling and blasting methods and whatever different types of methods which we have that's are all coming under execution engineering so these different types of your shield tbm and your dr drilling and blasting methods can be incorporated in our software and because of that you can even find the stresses because of your drilling with respect to your tunnel boring machine and uh, you can so you can go for the uh, your um, uh, short grids or your steel linings or your steel ribs or your anchors everything as such so this is one example so you're having an uh, in a very like complex slope so using this complex slopes we are going for a tunnel lining let's say this is my lining where uh, tun uh, tunnel where i'm storing my crude oil or my nuclear waste so i need to go for a steel lining or else i need to go for a clay impermeable strata and then i can directly pour my waste into it and i can study the uh, like uh, deformations and results accordingly stresses all such results so you can find the displacements you can find the short grid stresses if you are having a steel you can find the steel stresses you can find it is maximum at the intersection and that can be displayed in the software as well and you can find the actual forces in the rock balls as well so this is all about the presentation so now what i do is i will directly go into the software and then i will be giving you idea regarding a open pit and how it can be modeled using midas gtsnx so let's say uh, we are interested in only stress analysis for now and we are having a rock as well uh, means your entire open pit is a rock so i can directly go for an, a vertical or some a, a very steep slope so because it's a rock because it is having high strength as such so what i have done in here is i have provided a material for your entire uh, uh, rock material it might be a granite material or it might be uh, the similar material i'll be showing you the material properties now and then i'll be showing you the construction stage sequence for this particular open pit mine so how it basically it's a very random model uh, 
and uh, you can have if you're having any questions please let me know in the questions tab so this is your tunnel so this is your open pit basically we are having the entire let, let's say granite rock uh, this is my first excavation and this can be my second excavation i'm having a third excavation it's a very simple very simple slope and i will be going for next example where we ran uh, a slope stability analysis for open pit mine as well so in this stress analysis what we can even include is suppose this particular rock is having a joint joint plane because it's a discontinuities are present in here we can even model them as well suppose let's say i have provided some jointed rock mass so this is my jointed rock mass material and i have provided the elastic modulus which is different in different states like in x direction and your vertical direction and then the shear modulus accordingly and let's say you have what is the declination angle this declination angle is nothing but the angle of your particular plane with respect to north so that north should be defined now so that north with respect to your x-axis is nothing but your declination angle and then you go for number of joints suppose let's say i'm having a joint so and i'm having a filling materials there as well so i can provide c and phi of those filling materials and alpha 1 alpha 2 will be representing my dip angles so all these can be directly incorporated in the software and the software internally applies these discontinuities into your model that has been generated so you can even go for discontinuities in rock and later on you can run the slope stability or slope stability analysis or your uh, stress analysis basically this jointed rock mass can work for your stress analysis and one of our engineer is asking can you model a 3d geological feature in gtsnx uh, uh, can you please uh, uh, go in a very particular way i couldn't able to understand more information regarding that and i can directly answer you so uh, in the meantime i will be explaining you this particular uh, uh, open pit mine how has it been done uh, so this is your model uh, that's how this is my open pit mine and now i'm going for stress analysis so i have already defined my uh, different types of joints and uh, different uh, declinations and all those things so what we basically do in here is we will provide this particular material to your model using a mesh so here we got a mesh and this mesh will be directly considered and we will mesh the entire model like how we got in here so this mesh will be responsible for calculating your stresses so more finer your mesh the more accurate your results so that's how fem works finite element method works so now i have went for your construction stage analysis let's say i'm having all the mesh sets and in the very first stage, I'm having all my in situ conditions. So this is my slope. Sorry, this is my open pit. And uh, on, with respect to my first excavation, I removed this my first excavation material. And then second, I went for second excavation. And in the next step, I went for a third excavation. So basically, you're defining your construction sequence. So that's what we are going for and here uh, that has been defined in the construction stages and we will run the analysis now so we will go for a general and then we will define our construction stage so that has already been defined now we will run the analysis so this is my defined analysis case now we will perform the analysis so i have already performed the analysis that will be shown the results will be shown to you now yes so here um, this is my in situ condition so in situ condition you know excavation has been done and only self weight is being there there is no any external node as of now if you're having any blasting loads that even can that be uh, like applicable in here but in this particular case only self weight is considered so let's say in excavation one 
uh, this particular soil has been removed sorry your rock particular excavation has been removed and you can see I have considered a vertical uh, is like a slope because it's a rock I can find that this is very stable even at 90 degrees because I know its elastic modulus and shear modulus are huge so that's why I went for vertical slope now so now we will see the total translations so here we can see this is my total translation so because of your first excavation you can find a maximum displacement of only one mm so it's like very very less you can see this is like similar to um, because the material which we have considered are like very high it's like similar to granite material so that's why you can find very less and then now in the same case we will find the stresses so let's go for sh maximum shear stress so here you can see i uh, will change the units the maximum shear stress which you can find is like very 86.52 it's a very low value and that is concentrated at where we are having very less roadway where we are having a slope uh, which is changing its direction here you can see a very stress concentrated zone so this is the area where i can find 86.54 uh, that's nothing but my maximum shear in kilonewton per meter square uh, similarly, uh, suppose when you provide your water level, you can find your pore water pressure, all the other cases. But in this current model, I haven't provided my water level. So you can go for stresses in lateral direction, in your uh, vertical direction. So this is my vertical direction stresses. Now we will go for second stage where the another amount of uh, um, the excavation is done. So in the second stage, we will go for total translation. Yeah. So now you can see the maximum displacement which you can find is 2 mm and that is maximum at this particular area. You can see only 2 mm so that is no longer to worry it's a nominal case. And uh, so the problem where we, uh, we get is when we go for an uh, open pit mine where we find a soil material. So that's the problem where we find but this is a granite material and still you can analyze such slopes as well. Now uh, we will find a stresses in here. We will go for shear stress. So the maximum value which that is up, obtained in here is 171 kilonewton per meter square. And this is okay because here, here there is a huge value, but still the huge value is fine. Um, it means the maximum is in this position here. We can go for auto range. Yeah, this is the case where we are having. Now, uh, just rounding up the members has been done. Now, similarly, in the very last stage where this this part has been excavated will be uh, shown to you now. We will go for total translation. Yes, this is the major case. I'm having a displacement of like around 2.6. It's a very low so that's how you analyze it and based on the results which you obtain you can tally your results with your analytical methods and then you go for analysis so that's what basically i meant in here and that uh, means once you're analyzed you can directly go for your execution uh, next go for shear stress so now I'll change it into kilonewton per meter square. So the maximum stress which you can obtain is a 251.36 kilonewton per meter square. So that's the basic idea in here. So since this material, uh, this particular model is uh, very safe since we can see the maximum stress is under limit because the shear stress for the rock will be huge. It not be uh, similar to 251 kilonewton per meter square. The value which we are getting is very low. And now what we do is I am having certain another slope. We will be we will be running a slope stability analysis for the same and we can see the results accordingly and i will show you how to extract the results as well so let's say yeah this is my another model where i have run an a slope stability analysis along with the stress analysis so in gdsnx those two are coupled you can run a stress analysis along with the slope stability as well here what I have given is, I have given similar to granite material, but with of very some less strength now. So this is my strength, kilonewton per meter squared, 21 as my unit weight. So this might be somewhat weathered rock, but still uh, it, can, it is having 21 to 22. And then I had a cohesion value and a friction angle. 
and then I ran the analysis now we will see the results so how I have ran the analysis so what is the excavation sequence will be shown to you now so go to static slope simulate stage so what we do is we will just simulate yeah it's very slow let's go for very slow this is how it is going the excavation is done as such and here we can see a small roadways as well this is how we generally go for execution in case of our um, like real time you when you can perform your real time model as such as well now what we do is we run a construction stage analysis by removing the first part in the first stage so this is my first stage this is my in situ stage where the entire rock is present and i'm clearing the displacement for the particular sulfate of the rock and in the second stage I have excavated particular state a particular first excavation has been done and now I have run the slope stability analysis because of the first stage so first excavation has been done and now I will go for slope stability analysis how my entire model is behaving so that's the basic idea in here and now second excavation is done so stress analysis will be taking place you can find stresses and deformations again I have run the slope stability analysis fine and in the third stage I have run this this is my third excavation and similarly i will re, i will be running my slope stability analysis again similarly go for next stage uh, here the entire excavation sequence has been completed now we will run the slope stability analysis for the entire uh, open pit where you will be having a landslide failure or uh, um, a normal uh, a normal circular failure all those cases but since it's a rock we can see some displacement so we will find them in the results this is my construction sequence now i will be presenting you the results go to results so this is what i'm talking in the construction stage one this is my in situ stage i'm not worried about the in situ stresses so in situ stresses will be developed you can see the in situ stresses in the stresses in here in lateral stresses in horizontal stresses so all the in situ condition stresses will be obtained over here the s maximum all the conditions this is my shear stresses basically now what i do is in the second construction stage i will be excavating my first uh, mesh set which has been uh, uh, shown to you earlier so what i do is i will be showing you the total translation yeah so this is my total translation and i will be showing you the maximum displacement the maximum displacement which you found is 6.55 mm which is very low and in this particular case i run the slope stability analysis as well so this is my slope srm this represents my slope stability analysis now i'll be showing you the displacement when you get into slope stability so you got only 9 mm so see now it is very very uh, safe because because in the very construction stage you can see the safety factor which you obtained is 6 which is more than enough and the software will take up to 6 and if it is greater than 6 so that particular analysis will get terminated and the next stage will be activated so similarly we will see the next stage the excavation sequence of your second mesh set yeah this is my total excavation and now even before uh, slope stability analysis we got uh, only in the stress analysis we got a 9 mm which is okay because we are going for a granite material now what we do is we run the slope stability again so this is my total translation here you can see a part of my particular uh, entire slope is like uh, having huge deformations that's like up to 129 mm so this is very problematic zone now so bef because of my second excavations or uh, sorry because of my third excavation because this is a third excavation set when i ran a slope stability analysis i got some factor safety of 5.25 which is very safe but when this goes for a failure when this is my failure zone means when uh, whenever it goes for failure it goes for only 129 mm which is safe because when it goes into failure the displacement will only be 129 mm that is fine but in the stress analysis we got only uh, uh, 9 mm yes yeah we got only around 9 mm which is okay 
this is my stress analysis and I'm combining this particular slope with a slope stability analysis where I got a translation maximum of 129 mm which is fine again and now in the next stage I have run I have excavated even further and I have found the total translation of around 11 mm. This is a stress analysis. I'm differentiating between the stress analysis and a slope analysis because I have run a stress analysis and slope stability analysis in the same model for each and every excavations. So that's why I'm showing you a stress analysis along with the slope results as well. So this is my stress analysis results. I got 11 mm, that is fine. But now I will be interested in checking the slope stability or a failure surface because of this particular excavation. So next we go for construction stage for SRM. That is my representing my slope stability analysis. So now we go for total translation. Yes, you can see this is a huge failure and uh, you can find the factor of safety of 4.8 which is uh, which is okay that is satisfying your requirement of 1.5 or 2 that is okay but whenever because of some external loads or some other cases when it goes for your uh, failure that when this particular case is getting failure you will be having a maximum displacement of 2112.3 mm it's like around 2 meters of your displacement it is very large so we need to uh, i will be showing you another uh, results surrounding the area so this is my 197 and here i am getting 984 mm 11 and here i am getting 88886 eight, 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 sorry so that's how Whenever it goes for a failure, it will be showing you the maximum displacement of a 2112.3 mm, that's nothing but 2 meters, and the minimum will be uh, like somewhere around uh, uh, yeah, 0 mm. So here we can find a 0 mm over there. And in here, uh, this particular area is not safe, there's no need to f go for another study. Now, what we do is we need to go for some stabilization if this 4.8 factor of safety is not sufficient what we do is we will go for some other edge stabilization technique and then we need to uh, go for uh, your uh, slope stability analysis once again and now in the next stage i even excavated further now we will see the stress results so that's the maximum results which you find is only 12 mm but now again i'm i'm interested in running and a slope stability analysis now now we'll see the maximum displacement it can able to attain yeah you can attain only uh, around 2123 so similar to your previous stage the last excavation is not posing you any problem the maximum slope uh, failure which uh, you're getting is again 2.1 meter you can go for at undeformed or deformed state so this is my deformed state and i will be featuring you the um wire def undeformed for deform yeah this is my original position uh, i'll be showing you in this way yeah here this is my original position and i will be having the uh, results such as 2.2 one meters getting into the tunnel sorry into the uh, like uh, getting a sliding away is up to only two meters which is fine for me because i'm having a factor of safety uh, at large which is like 4.8 you can see the factor of safety is in each stages two three four and five which will be uh, means we can have an entire idea about how our complete model is being behaved yeah now this is your complete uh, thing related to your open pit now we will be going for your deep mining yes so this is your complete uh, um, analysis regarding your deep mining so what i have done in here will be shown to you now so this is your entire model now what i do is i will take the take out the rock which is not being excavated and this is my excavation portion let's say this is my excavation portion and this is my shaft and i'm having a tunnel as well 
so what i'm interested in here is uh, i'm interested in analysis for a strength uh, like your stress analysis i'll be getting a deformations i will be getting a stresses again and i'm also interested in having a support system for my uh, shaft and for my uh, your particular tunnel as well suppose let's say this is my tunnel so we go for a temporary excavation now let's say so what i do is i'll be providing a steel ribs so i have provided a steel ribs i'll be showing it to you and i have provided a in a steel uh, case for your shaft so that is your shell elements so that will be shown to you now so only uh, your particular uh, support system will be shown to you now these are my support systems yeah so here this is my particular uh, like shaft for sorry the support system for the shaft this is my steel casing let's say i'm have i provided a steel material and this is my steel casing and we also got a steel ribs so these are my steel ribs and uh, this will be acting my like my temporary supports and whenever you're in, like going for an uh, tunnel excavation so what the first sequence is your excavate will be excavating the shaft and then you start your tunnel so depending on the ge ge um, geometry or geological features present over there we go for vice versa in some cases as well so what we do is in while you're going for tunnel excavations we will remove this steel casing and this will be somewhat like this and here we haven't provided uh, any other supports uh, apart from the steel ribs and uh, these are our excavation areas let's say these are our excavation areas so one of our engineer is asking that uh, is this slope stability based on the slope angles or arbitrary slope angles so basically what happens in here is i have taken an angle of 45 degrees in the open pit mines previously shown to you so please go for uh, a slope stability analysis based on the geometric modeling that has been uh, um, uh, means directly obtained for you like let's say we are you have your design engineer has been designed your uh, slope for 45 degrees then we will model 45 degrees and the geometry accordingly in the software and we will run the slope stability analysis so whatever shape which you give to the software it will run accordingly so no need to uh, like if you're having some other slope let's say you will be interested in uh, another slope so we need to generate another model let's say i'm having a slope of 30 degrees now so accordingly we will model it and we will provide it in the software the software will analyze it and then it will be providing you the results according to your uh, like a 45 or a 50 degree or a 30 degree so we need to run your two to three analysis and then we will be getting the results accordingly and then the uh, optimistic results among all will be taken and will be give, will be going for an execution based on your optimistic results so that's the basic idea here yes so now this is our deep excavation so what i do is i'll be showing you the excavation sequence so let's say i have removed my rock so this is my rock and i'm just hiding my rock what I will do here is I'll be showing you my excavation sequence. So simulate my stage and yeah, this is how I go. I go and remove the shaft first and then I place my shelves elements and then I remove my tunnel and then uh, I, pro I mean, I will provide the steel ribs and go for excavation of the tunnel and then excavation of your entire uh, means a material which you are interested in mining so this is my sequence construction sequence so now we will see the results accordingly yeah as i said this is my construction sequence and if you are having any doubts regarding your support systems please let me know if the uh, how it is like easily uh, modeled in gdsnx will be uh, will be tell, told to you from now 
and now we will go for results i have shown you the construction sequence and now we'll be seeing the results at, at each and every stage so what i have done is i have removed this particular case and uh, mesh set means your shaft mesh set and then i have provided a steel casing so it becomes hollow against steel hollow against the hollow and then it goes as such and in the next stage we i go for excavation of my tunnels and then i provided the steel ribs and uh, once my tunnel is completely excavated i go for excavation of the area this is my entire volume where you need to excavate for your material for so now we so since we ran and stress analysis i will be showing you the results accordingly so let's say uh, we are interested in the results in the 14th stage let's say this is a 14th stage where i have provided the tunnel up to here so let's say the tunnel is a, like complete or full and I haven't excavated the tunnel now. So we will go for the very uh, first cases. Yes, here till uh, till here what I have done is I have excavated a, so, uh, means my uh, rock for my shaft and I have provided my shaft till here means my shell elements or my plate elements or my steel till here. So this is my uh, total translation. So now what I do is I will be showing you the bending moment diagrams and uh, your uh, rotations on your particular plate elements. Let's say this is my rotations. Let's go. You, you can see how much it's like very low values. These values are present in radians and I can. So these are in radians and you can't change the results. So this you are in radians the maximum value or else you can go for auto range so this is the radiance how much it go for uh, rotation so it's uh, uh, our deformations the deformations can be in the form of a translation or a rotation so now what i will be showing you is i'll be showing you the bending moment in different directions so uh, these particular areas haven't been excavated till now only steel um, lining has been placed till here and the bending moment and your member forces are here as such. Yes. And now I can even show you the shear stress accordingly in even in my elements like my steel. So these are my steel. You can you can see the hollow cases in here, and the maximum value which you got is 679 kilonewton meter per meter square. Now I'll be going for another case where have generated lining means it, uh, your complete excavation of your shaft has been done and now it's excavation of your tunnel so what i have gone in here is in the next stage i have gone for event provision of my steel ribs so let's go for total translation so now the total translation which you can obtain is very low because it's a granite metal it's like not even one mm so now we will see the uh, means load coming onto your steel ribs let's say you can go for axial force the axial force which you are getting is uh, very low now now you can go for uh, uh, the bending moment diagram and in along two axis your x-axis and your y-axis as well and now you can get to have uh, your complete rock coming into picture and now you can see the uh, results related to your total translation so this is your total translation till now no excavation has been done but still you can find an, uh, a little bit ex uh, results like a little bit uh, displacement now we will change it into mm it's like a, a 0.5 millimeter so now we will go further and we will go for excavation of your complete tunnel. So this is my rock. Yes, in here I started excavating my particular uh, cases as well where uh, I'm interested. Yeah, these are my uh, mesh sets where I need to excavate because of this excavation. What is the stress concentrated will be sh uh, shown to you now. Here, the maximum displacement which you can find uh, is like only uh, 0.3 mm, which is very much fine. Our complete tunnel is stable now.
and now what we do is I'll be showing you at the next state where you went for excavation of your complete uh, mine so these are my mine where, where it means volume which needs to be excavated so what I will be showing is I'll be showing you the rock and uh, from the back I'll be showing you go to results again and the very last stage I have excavated till here so what I will be seeing is I'll be seeing the total translation let's see yes this is my excavated area and uh, I'm excavating my complete uh, excavation till in this particular volume and this will be taken back to the tunnel which is being shown in here and from the tunnel uh, you can uh, means from the tunnel you can transfer to the shaft and the from shaft you can get to have your muck material all this stuff this the displacement is only 2 mm so because we we are having very stable rock suppose let's say we are having very uh, instable rock or weathered rock or if you are having any soil material then you need to provide some pillars or let's say we need to provide some lining for the cases and now I'll be showing you stresses the shear stress yes this is your maximum stress which you are finding the maximum value which you are getting is 491 kilonewton per meter square i think this is very low when compared to the shear modulus of your uh, rock the granite rock you got your 491 kilonewton per meter square and what i can show you again is i can show you the plastic strain means what I'm showing you in here is this particular area will enter into the plastic zone and here you can see the failure where it can start. This is the area where you can find the starting of the failure. So I have done only half of my particular excavation, let's say. So what I can show is I can even convert these particular results into the uh, means in, in order to show the full view of your entire excavated area I can go for mirror view means I can show you the results but the results can only be uh, extracted from this particular model I will be showing you your uh, mirror view so let's say my tunnel I'm having the tunnel on the other side means I'm having the excavation onto the other side let's go and I'll be providing you the uh, zero so this is my area and you are having two tunnel and uh, two excavation areas and let's say in a, a y direction I'm having another material so this is my entire material I'm having I'm excavating in here in the very middle and uh, and uh, these are two my shafts and we got a four shafts and a four tunnels so we can see the front view so we can see the hollow material coming into here yeah what I will be showing you in now is I'll be showing you the total deformations coming onto your entire model yes the maximum deformations which you can see is only 2.3 mm so it's very fine now your entire model you can see the uh, deformation contours you can see the stress contours and uh, other results respectively so uh, I will be showing you the axial forces diagram in your beam elements now so I'm just hiding all my mirror view uh, this is my model which has been prepared only the one fourth has been prepared suppose if it if you're having an axis symmetry model or let's say a symmetric model towards one axis then you can model only half and that can be mirrored over there Uh, I'll be showing you only steel ribs now so this is my particular displacement and we will be going into axial force this is my axial force and this can be my bending moment diagram which is maximum in here when winds in the very large steel rib where the entire excavation is going for it'll be going for a uh, shear force diagram so what why basically these are important is your entire diagram can be directly taken to your uh, structural engineer where he can perform uh, the structural design of your entire model so that's why I'm showing you your particular case 
and now so this is one case and uh, as I shown you uh, the shear modulus sorry shear strength everything as such will be showing you the plastic behavior this is my plastic state so in the entire model you can find the plastic zone in here so in the very last of your excavation you can find the plastic zone so this means that this your entire model is going into the plastic state only at this particular point now your entire model is not yielding only here this this particular area is being yielding so which is safe so if you are having any uh, other questions related to a particular model present in today I um, mean topic please let me know uh, in the questions tab and I will be discussing it now and uh, the other cases will be uh, taken for the next webinar so please let me know if you're having any questions and one more important thing in here is suppose as I was telling you regarding a uh, coupled analysis so in this particular case where we can run a coupled analysis is we go to stage we, we got a fully coupled analysis we will just add it in here and now what I do is I will be deactivating my mesh sets according to the construction sequence but activating a water load or means uh, the seepage water level everything in here so you can define your water level and this water level can be defined and then uh, uh, these results will be affecting your pore water pressure and the corresponding the total stress everything will be um, affected and because of that what is the excavation that means uh, effect on your excavation sequence can be studied and even you can find the pore water pressures and uh, you can find the volume of water coming to in this particular case I haven't provided the water level and I haven't run the slope step uh, means the seepage analysis but once you run the seepage analysis you can find the results like your flow path and the flow quantity uh, wherever you're interested in so that's uh, about this particular topic and uh, this topic uh, means based on the contact which I got earlier from Mr. Ayan, I can able to point out the uh, means uh, uh, the problematic areas present in slope stability of your open pit mine and then uh, the uh, like underground deep excavations. So this is here about uh, the uh, like uh, the basic introduction webinar in this particular uh, webinar one. But in webinar two, what we can do is we can go across your specific problems. Suppose let's say uh, we, you got any specific problem related to any other project uh, related to a deep excavation or open pit mine can be uh, directly shared with us and we can have a live demonstration training on your two that means in two uh, live demonstrations resulting uh, means how we can able to uh, overcome that particular stage in using Midas GTS NX can be shown to you and actually an online questionnaire will be shared with you uh, by Mr. Ayan uh, please, please uh, means describe your opinions and problems and feedback on this particular questionnaire and this will be uh, very much helpful for us in order to understand the problems being faced by the mining engineers uh, in reality and how that can be solved in GTS NX will be taken uh, to in your webinar too, taken through your webinar too and please let me know if you're having any other questions. Mr. Ayan will be contacting you and following up on the same. If you're having any other queries, please let me know. So you can actually write all your queries in the questions tab uh, present over here. Or else you can directly mail your queries to harsha at midasit.com. I am a technical uh, uh, engineer who uh, directly answers all your queries. This is Harsha. And uh, please mail all your queries at the harsha at, harsha at midasit.com. And related to all the queries of your Midas GTS NX and all the queries related the, to the problems which you are facing. Yes, the computer system requirements for running Midas, it's the question from one of the engineer. So basically, when you're having a, a, like a minimum of 4 GB RAM, 
and the minimum of your uh, i3 or i5 processor then it will be damn good but let's say if you're having very huge problem let's say means what uh, the requirements depending on the type of projects is depending on the type of projects let's suppose you're having very huge project like deep mining in 70 to 80 construction stages you'll be having huge number of elements then i can recommend you for at least 8 gb ram of your uh, laptop and you can go for at least quarter core processor actually the interesting thing in gts nx is we can have ability to enable the graphic processing unit and also the logical pro processors can be included it as well so that all the cores of your computer can be taken uh, yes sir actually uh, it's a very uh, good package where we can easily run all the slope stability cases and even your uh, stability purpose and deformation analysis as well so one of your engineer is saying that it's a very good software it just needs some time to really fully understand the package yes sir we will be helping throughout your evaluation period so whatever queries which you have please let us know through the questionnaire or by directly sending your queries through hashtag.midasit.com and then we will directly contact you through the same and we will be uh, means assisting you with your projects and with your evaluation of the software as well So the requirements of the software, as I said, depending, it's all depending on the type of model and the number of uh, the size of the model, uh, it depends. So if it's very high, I can recommend for 8 GB, but it runs very well even in uh, 4 GB RAM and uh, i3 processor as well. Because as I said, even in, in our softwares, we can have uh, the options in order to choose your number of processes and you can enable your gpu acceleration graphical processing usage which will uh, like double or triple your uh, uh, analysis speed so that's the basic requirement in here so uh, please let me know if you're having any further questions Uh, as uh, regarding to the commercial aspects, Mr. Ayan will be contacting you. I'm a, basically, I'm a technical uh, engineer in here. Uh, Mr. Ayan will be contacting you and will be giving you the entire list of the software package. It means the price cost of the software package and uh, uh, he can discuss you based on the uh, requirements you have and based on the modules that serves your purpose. So Mr. Ayan will be contacting you soon. Yes, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, so this is end for today's webinar and we will be sharing you a, a questionnaire with you uh, soon and please fill the questionnaire. We will be directly uh, means having the access to the questionnaire and we will be going for a particular second webinar with your particular problem statements which you are being sending to us. So thanks for your time. Oh, one more question from an engineer. Uh, does the boundary conditions predefined? No, sir. We need to define the boundary conditions in the software. Here, uh, when we go for uh, any type of analysis, let's go for static slope analysis. We can find a boundary condition in here. We need to define a boundaries, uh, but we got an auto automatic feature for this. Further, directly go to constraints and you can go to auto and you can provide your boundary conditions automatically. So even that can be provided or else all the manual features such as uh, advanced tools by resisting certain Devo apps by considering the required nodes can be generated easily or else you can go for dynamic analysis, you can go for infinite uh, uh, boundary conditions, all those things can even be possible. Okay, so that's it for today's webinar. Uh, please let me know uh, your feedback through the questionnaire that we'll be sending by us or else you can directly mail your queries uh, in in this particular uh, uh, at this particular mail email ID harsha at the rate midas .com. So thanks for attending the webinar. Thank you.